talking about Lamar Jackson before the break and the fact the Saints are interested in looking at Mr. Lamar Jackson. Uh, well, that's interesting unless they're going to move up to get him because like me and DC agreed to, I don't think he's going to be there at 27th. We got an interesting topic we're going to talk about too pertaining to Lamar Jackson and how in the heck all these other guys are going ahead and what his statistics are clearly better than some of these guys. What is the underlying thing here? Uh, is, is, is In my account, I think Lamar Jackson is the best quarterback in this draft. I mean, he, he can throw it. He's accurate. He can make passes on a run. He's quicker than most of your wide receivers. The guy is, 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 is talented. So we'll cover that as well later on in uh, the show. Looking at the, the Lamar Jackson thing overall, his thing, DC, uh, of course, the Saints looking at him. They're also looking at uh, wide receiver Cortland Sutherland. Sutton from SMU. So the Saints kind of giving us like a hint here at what we possibly could be looking at. What could we could possibly be doing here? Very interesting to see how exactly the Saints are operating. Very interesting to say the least. You take a look at some of the things New Orleans is doing, man. I mean, it's absolutely excellent. The Most of the guys they've already signed back to fill keyholes and situations that occurred. Interesting, very interesting. The tight end position was something we was all looking at. Then you look at it, you say, well, uh, this tight end, could it be a uh, a pick for the Saints could reach in, in, in the first round, the second round, I mean the third round, excuse me, they don't have a two, and talk about getting a tight end. A lot of the people, the listeners too, man, to be quite honest with you, they kind of, you know, that's like, well, we need another edge rusher. You know, we need another guy. I don't know if there'll be a guy ready for you at 27th, the edge rusher uh, that that's that that might be high on the board. Something tell me it's going to be one of those funny drafts where you're going to get a different type of player than what you're looking to. But what I'm saying is the Saints set themselves up to take anybody on the board that falls to them. That's how you, and they really did knowing that right. how how the how it all ran out. They resigned the depth. They got a tight end and Benjamin Watson solidified a tight end position at least for another year. Ray Johnson and uh, Okafor. Right, they got Okafor back. They got George Johnson back. They still got. I don't know. I don't. A lot of people seem to forget sometimes how many damn defensive ends we have. You know, we have a lot of defensive ends. You know, you have a lot of George Johnson, Emeka Okafor, uh, 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 Kikaha is there. Trey Hendrickson is there. Uh-huh. Uh, Muhammad is there. Muhammad. You know, they, all these. These are all. This like. Hendrickson? Right, all these guys are here. So I mean, we give, we we tend to forget that. Well, forget but that. Just take another one. I they, mean, they can't play both sides, though. You have to think about that. It's that's Cam true. Jordan, that's that's true. But you don't so, give you give Okafor uh no. you know a nice little cheap contract to come in and play the other end. He looked terrific there when he was healthy. The issue is the Saints have basically loaded that position up, and they got a linebacker. We talk about that. How about the Mario Davis? You know, you plug him that way, A.J. Klein and Alex Anzalone and the rest of those guys. So, you know, we need a, you to take a linebacker. No, you, the Saints have set themselves up to it's take any. improve the whole linebacking core, just the addition of him. Right. By taking and, other responsibilities and obligations off of other people. And the thing about it is, they, I guess they've seen it as, no, they must certainly seen it as, we're going to get to Mario Davis here. Once we get the Mario Davis here, that gives us ability to have a veteran we can rely on to make plays for the defense as opposed to a young guy. We're going to get this sturdy veteran who's still in the prime of his career, who's fast, who's tough, who's smart, and most importantly, he's available because he has not missed games. He is there, and I think the Saints is paying for that availability is the fact that he has he is there. He plays every game. So that's an interesting thing. Another thing we're going to talk about too is the fact that we had our this uh, video report or we did a segment on the previous sports coma about Darius Geis falling to you. Got a lot of fan, uh, uh, a lot of sponsor, a lot of whatever you want to call it, feedback. That's a better word. Feedback from uh, the listening public out there, all the guys out there listening. Thank you all guys. Thank all of you guys uh, for chiming in. And I'm going to ask you to chime in again, even in some of the guys that's waiting to chime in that hadn't chimed in before. To chime in again on the subject, so we let's we go because we're gonna touch on it right quick. Of course, when we spoke about the Darius guy situation, we we have to take into account the fact that there are some very important factors that's underlined with that decision to to make the decision. We're not just saying just take and just load up your field with with first round draft picks or high pick running backs, Whoa. right? That's yes. how it sounds. Well, what is going on is what I'm saying is. You look at the the availability, like we spoke about with Demario Davis. He doesn't miss football games. This is really the first year that right. Mark Ingram, last year, of course, was the first year Mark Ingram played the entire season. Prior to that, 
he missed uh, chunks of games. He wasn't there for them. This we, year he was. Looked- Right, he we was completely out of it when he was missing too. I mean, uh, Ingram was a very important part of the team when he was missing a lot of them games, and you can see some of the games we lost because we didn't have didn't him. have him in there. Absolutely. Uh, so what I'm saying, yeah, a similar thing going on last year with Alvin Kamara. The two games he missed, I think we lost both of those games. So that that's the issue. What we talking about? Elvin Kamara missed games oh, last actually, year. He only, he only missed one. He missed one game. He, he one he, game he missed. He he missed he, when Elvin Kamara so, missed the game last year. And the the point is, those guys play together. Sean Payton, Payton, Payton plays those guys together. So they are not running back one and running back two. Those guys are starters together. They're in the game at the same time. And merely what I was saying about that is two, very, very, uh, maybe three if you add his age, contract, age, and availability. Is something you're betting on as he getting up into that 30 range. Now, he hits his birthday uh, right toward the end of this year, right toward when the season ends, if this upcoming season ends. He hits his birthday. You're going to really pay that much for a 30-year-old back. Now, this is all speculative if Geis is there. That's all I'm saying is if, if Geis is there, do you overlook the fact that he only had one year left? And then some people told me, I hear, I hear you out there. You said, well, Q will sign him back cheaper. Uh, get him to a cheap deal. <laughs> you don't know what he's going to take. If he if he can find a better deal somewhere else and somebody say, listen, Mark, you don't have to share the, share the backfield with anybody. We'll bring you in here. You don't know how it's going to so, turn so out. You, you sound like you, you, you lend to, leading to my side of the argument, which uh, I didn't... I said we, we should get him if he's there, but you trade Mark Ingram. No, I didn't say nothing about trading him. No, I'm why, not on your side. Why would he sign back? Why would he sign? No, no, listen. I'm not him? on your side of the argument about trading him. All I'm saying is the fact that <laughs> you have to I don't want to trade Mark this. Ingram. I don't want to trade Mark him, Ingram. Man. I don't want to I don't want to trade him. You're not going to They not all walk. That's why it's a purpose you got to hold on, hold Especially on. Especially if Darius Geis is who we thought he is. All I'm saying is that if Darius Geis is there at 27, Darius Geis if he is on the board at 27 when the Saints pick he is going to be the highest player on your board. You not tell you can't tell me that right now. The Saints don't have Darius Geis on well, the goddamn if, board. What if Lamar Jackson is there too? Then I'm taking Lamar Jackson. If okay. the, if that's a different question. If Lamar Jackson is there at 27, then I take Lamar Jackson. He said, "Well, hold on, Q. What's the difference? The difference is you have a quarter. The quarterback is the is the leader of the team." So I would need to replace him. And I got Drew on a one-year deal. I might have to reset this team in a year. I might right. have to reset this team in a year. So if well, I... Actually, te- technically, it's, it's a two-year deal, but... It breaks... It's technically a two-year deal, but it breaks bridge. down to a one-year deal, but the second year is voided out. So if I'm not mistaken, I don't have to research that, but I remember reading it saying that that second year, I think it voids itself out. But outside of that, even though... You still have Drew for one more year. If 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 he's there, you take him. Bottom line. But that's what I was saying about the Darius guys situation. Right. Of course, you guys can chime in and tell me. Uh, with that bit of information, do you change your opinion or do you stay the same? Let us know uh, what time it is on. Most, it. most people probably will stay the same because you have a, a very uh, emotional, sentimental uh, aspect to the Ingram and Al Kamara connection. I mean, Al Kamara seems to really like Mark Ingram and vice versa. They play good together, and I'm not necessarily someone who would be happy about breaking that up. But you gotta do what's best for your team, and I don't think a lot of people think that. Hey, Mark Ingram's been in the league eight years; he's only been healthy one year. He's got one year left on the contract. He this, is like business, this is a um, business, people. This is a business. Pretty much show up your running. This is a business. This is very, very, a very reasonable amount of money for the next four years, and then after the fourth year, you only have to sign. Alvin Kamara to probably a big deal at that point. This is this this is a this is a business, people. Y'all got to understand that this is a business, a football business. I understand, like you said, that sentimental attachment, but this is football. If they can find a, a cheaper back that can make the offense go better than Mark, they're gonna do it. They're gonna pull the trigger anyway. Stick with us. We'll be back on the other side of break. Talk more football and boxing on the sports coma. Stay with us. Forget ESPN or Fox. Get straight sports talk from the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 